have two branches of electricity so we have electrostatics so electrostatics focuses on charges at rest and electrodynamics focuses on charges in motion so we have also types of direct current uh, types of electricity i mean so we have um, direct current which is the electricity with constant polarity meaning that it does not changes in its polarity constant and we have alternating current which is an electricity with changing polarity so it changes its polarity re relative to time then you have electrical charge so a body is said to be electrically charged if there is an excess or a deficit of electrons from its normal value so a body is charged for example we have um we have let's use an uh, let's use the pencil uh, we have as uh let's say um lithium so lithium has atomic number of three so therefore it's um number of electrons and number of protons is equal to three okay so for example if the three electrons of lithium is um one of uh one of those um electrons are discarded from the uh, atom from the lithium atom so you will have only two electrons okay. so there exists now a deficit so there exists now a deficit in the electrons of an atom for example you have also um helium we will use this vacant part here helium helium has an atomic number of two and and it is added by one of the electrons of lithium so we'll have three new electrons of helium then therefore there is now exists i the electrons of the of helium has now an excess so basically pag sobra yung electrons or um or may kakulangan sa electron ang isang element ang isang body or ang isang substance ay masasabing electrically charged then you have ion so ion is a charge atom so charge atom so either it is it has a deficit or an excess of an electron as long as there is um, a change in the normal number of electrons on that atom then that atom is said to be charged then you have cut ion so cut ion is a positively charged ion so in the previous slide we learned that the negatively charged ion is called an ion then we have ionization so that is the process of producing ions so the the process of transferring um electron from one atom to another that is ionization so column so because we are now talking of charge so the unit of charge is column which is equivalent to 6.25 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons or protons so the unit is named after french physicist charles a column so we have here the equivalent one column so this is one c one column is equal to 6.25 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons so this is a very important equivalent then we have potential difference so potential so that is the capability of doing work any charge has the capability of moving another charge either by attraction or repulsion so if there is a repulsion or attraction the charges move and that move and that uh, movement or that capability of doing work is now called as a potential difference so, 
uh, in the last slide, I told you about uh, an atom. For example, this is an atom. This is, is its electron. This is an atom or so. This electron. I told you about that there is something that is pushing this electron from one point and going to this one. And this another electron is going to this one. And that is the basically the principle behind electricity. So that force is now called as the potential. No? Potential. Some will call us as it is much known to us as voltage. Okay, voltage. So the difference between the force in this atom, ah, in this electron to this electron is called as potential difference. So we just call that one as PD. So that is basically the uh, concept of potential difference. So voltage exists in order for electrons to move from one atom to another. If there's no, uh, if there's no voltage, there will be no movement, and therefore there will be no electricity. So the unit for voltage is volt. So the unit of potential difference, voltage, which is equal to one joule of work done per one column of charge. So it is named after the Italian physicist Alessandro. Uh, volta. No? So the 1 volt, so 1 V is equal to 1 joule, joule per 1 coulomb as per definition of the unit of voltage. So we could have this formula as E is equal to WQ wherein E is the potential difference, uh, W is the work done, and Q is the charge. So the unit for potential difference is volts. The unit for work is in joule and the unit for charge is in column then you have electric current so the electric current is the motion of electron per unit time so when you when we say the motion of electron that is charge and per unit time so how many electrons are moving in one second how many electrons are moving in uh, one minute, so that is basically electric current. So as as an analogy, so voltage is the pressure, the water pressure, and the electric current is the amount of water or the volume of water flowing in a certain tube. So that is the analogy. So the motion of electron per unit time is current, and we have this formula: E is equal to Q over T. So our uh, excuse me, this is, that is not E, that is I. So our I is current. Current. Our Q is the charge. And our T is the time. So we, we know what are the units of these quantities. Okay, so current is in amperes, uh, charge is in column, and time is in seconds. So the units that we are using here are, are the SI units. So we could also have um, minutes, hours, but the SI unit for time is second. So one ampere is equivalent to one column per one second so this is now the equivalent of an ampere so an ampere is the unit of electric current so it is named after andre mary ampere then we have resistance so resistance is the total oppos opposition to the flow of electrons in a circuit its effect on a circuit is evident by the dissipation of heat so we're going uh, going back to the analogy of uh, water in a um, tube or in a pipe. So uh, the pressure, the water pressure is the voltage. The, f the volume of water flowing is the current. So if there, if there exists any restriction to the flow of water, then that will be the resistance. So as analogy, the, the one that is controlling the flow or uh, or blocking the flow of water is the gate valve so that gate, gate valve can be known as a uh, can be 
an can be analogous to resistance. So, in in a complete circuit, there is always resistance. If there is a voltage, there is current. So there is something uh, blocking the flow of current on this on a certain circuit, and that one is called resistance. So resistance is the opposition to the flow of electrons in a circuit. Then we have ohm. So ohm is the unit for resistance. So it is named after George Simon Ohm. So the unit for resistance is in ohm. So resistance in a wire. So we have this formula in um, in calculating the resistance in a wire or of a wire. So we have R is equal to rho. So this is the Greek letter rho L over A, where R stands for the resistance. No? And rho stands for resistivity. Then we have L stands for length. So this is the length of the wire. And A is for the area. So this is the formula in getting the resistance in a wire or the resistance of a wire. So with this formula, we can say that if the length of the wire increases, so if there is an increase in the length of the wire, while the area of the wire is held constant, then the resistance also increases. So in, in mathematics, this is known as direct proportionality. So the resistance in a wire is directly proportional to the length. Now if the area of a wire of the wire increase then the resistance in the wire so we are holding the length constant so we we are not changing the length of the wire but we are just increasing its area then the resistance of the wire decrease so in mathematics this is called inverse proportionality the resistance of the wire is inversely proportional to the area of the wire so the constant of proportionality is, is the rho so rho is constant it is dependent to what type of material that the wire is. For example, it is either copper, aluminum, silver, gold. So it is the dependent to the um, to the material or to the type of material the wire is. So the for example, you have a copper wire. So if you increase the length of the copper wire, you increase the resistance of the wire. If you decrease if you increase the area of the wire, then you also, uh, then you or you decreases the resistance of the wire. So for so that is how this formula can be interpreted by looking at the formula itself. So that is the reason why wires that uh, wires in much bigger sizes or much bigger area has high ampacity because they have lower resistance so resistance is the hindrance to the flow of current so therefore if you have um, a little resistance or much lower resistance then you will have high ampacity because the wire can allow for a greater flow of current so that is the um, concrete application of this formula so the specific resistance or the resistivity this is the raw so the resistance offered by a unit cube of the material. So that is, uh, for example, if you have a cube of copper, one, uh, one 
square a uh, one cubic meter of copper what is the equivalent resistance it can offer so that is constant depending on the material so the resistivity of copper is not equal to the resistivity of aluminum and how did they do they get that so they test that one so by testing then circular mill so that is the area of a circle having a diameter of one mill usually wires are given or are um, given the sizes in circular mill and circular mill is equal to um, is equal to the diameter of a circle having a measure of one mill so we have this formula circular mill is equal to d squared so for example if this is our wire this is the cross-sectional area of the wire so it is a circle so this is the diameter so this is our d so in order to get the circular mill of our wire so we need to have cm is equal to d squared so 1000 mil is equal to 1 inch or we could say that 1 inch so we must remember this equivalent 0 is equal to 0 point uh, I mean I have that one in reverse so let's just erase this one okay so sorry for the noise if this noise will be recorded because I am in my room and there is a um, repair shop in the uh, near the room okay so you have um, one mil is equal to 0 0.001 inch so that is the equivalent the other the other equivalent if we are going to have one mil no then we have one mcm so that is one mega circular mil is equal to 1000 circular mil so on the next few videos so i will be solving problem or giving examples of problems that involve those uh, this formula and the other formula that have been discussed in this video then we have also the effect of temperature in resistance so an increase in temperature in a wire or a system will result in an increase on resistance so if a certain wire is exposed to heat therefore exposing that wire to heat it will increase its temperature and temperature is directly proportional to resistance therefore resistance of that wire also will increase so we have this uh, four formulas so we have r1 over r2 is equal to t plus t1 over t plus e2 then r2 is uh, r then you have r2 over r1 is equal to 1 plus alpha t1 delta t so our delta t is equal to t2 minus t1 so alpha t1 is equal to 1 over t plus t1 so our r1 is the initial temperature uh, the initial resistance our r2 is the final res resistance then our t1 is the excuse me uh, t1 is the initial temperature and t2 is the um, final temperature our t is the inferred absolute temperature so that is the temperature when the resistance of a given material is equal to zero so that is the inferred absolute temperature at that temperature the resistance of a wire is equal to zero the inferred absolute temperature is also dependent to the type of material so the inferred um, absolute temperature of copper is not equal to the inferred absolute temperature of aluminum then we have uh, alpha no? alpha is the temperature coefficient of resistance it is also dependent to the material and the um, specified temperature so we have characteristics of common conductor so this one is the um, the table where we can have the or where we can uh, have the difference between the common conductor so have silver 
the resistivity observer is silver is zero uh, nine point nine ohm circular mill per feet. So this is its um, uh, resistivity. The inferred absolute temperature is two hundred forty degrees Celsius, and the temperature coefficient at twenty degrees Celsius is zero point zero zero thirty eight. So we have also for copper, aluminum, tungsten, and zinc. So like I said. The resistivity, the inferred absolute temperature, and the temperature coefficient of resistance is dependent to the type of material. The temperature coefficient of resistance, so the ohmic change per degree per ohm as some specified temperature. So that is the temperature coefficient of resistance. Then we have conductance. So conductance is the measure of the material's ability to conduct electricity. So it is the exact opposite or the reciprocal of resistance. So the unit for conductance is Siemens, which is formally the unit use is Mo or the reverse of the unit Ohm. But now it, the SI unit for conductance is Siemens. So the formula for conductance is this one, G is equal to 1 over R, wherein your G is the conductance, conductance, and R is the resistance. So if we are going to calculate the conductance of a wire, so we just substitute the formula for the resistance of a wire. So if you remember that one, that is R plus, so 1 over L over A. So it will become, so this is at the bottom, that is the reciprocal. So we have A over rho L. And this is now equal to the conductance. So this is the formula for conductance in a wire given the area and the length and the resistivity of the wire okay so our next topic or our next discussion will be Ohm's law and after these five videos so I will be solving problems so common problems that will that you'll be encounter in the exam and we'll try to solve those problems so that we can have a better overview and we can have a proper application of those formulas in um, in the context of the exam so i hope you learned something from this video thank you for watching and as always in order to pass the exam keep studying